Hey guys, welcome to our vlog show. This is basically a show where we show what's in the works. Right now, what I'm working on is one of the most complicated uh, mosaic Damascus swords that I've ever accomplished. I'm about in the midway portion of it. Now I've made a ton of mosaic billets, all kinds of different patterns. The main one here was a giant bar. I got about this much more material that I've made for my central portion of the sword. Um, what I've done is I've cut this into four or five different tiles and then I've reduced all of my mosaic billets down to little tiles that are going to stack up kind of like a weave in between all of these. So my next step is to take all these little baggies full of tiny little tile parts, start laying them out, get them fitted just right, tack weld them together, and then completely forge weld all of these pieces and then that will just be my core. So I basically have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight mosaic billets that are gonna go into just making the core of this sword. You can hear Ilya's outside right now. He's working on a project himself. He's making a naginata out of bloom steel uh, for a customer. Uh, he's also making some hammers and stuff. So we'll catch up with him a little later. So now that I got all my pieces cut from this billet and all the other billets, let's take them out of the bags. do a rough layout of what the central core is going to look like. So this central billet that I did is made up of one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five billets. Um, pretty, pretty ambitious what I'm going to attempt here. As I just started getting into Mosaic Damascus just for this specific project, so I'm still fairly new to it. But I feel like I've come a long way already. So these pieces, maybe hard to see, are all cut right here. This is my five central pieces. Then I have a bag of gear. full of longer pieces that are about the same length of uh, material as the side pieces here. So I'm going to have one, actually I'm going to do it like this, I have one of these long pieces on the side. all of these central pieces. So they'll be placed just like that. Then what I've done is I took a second billet. Now this billet, um, this was pretty unique. Uh, I did kind of uh, an explosion pattern, if you will, that I highly altered. So it's not just standard explosion. I kind of made little flowers out of it. So instead of the pieces just coming out radiating like normal explosion, these pieces kind of create little flowers. And I reduced this down to about three quarters of the length of the initial of the initial bar. Those will get stacked here on this piece. Like that. Like that. That. 
Well, then what I have to do is I have one more sizing bit to do, and that is my initial billet that I call the flower billet, I have to reduce down to three quarters the size of this. Now I have already forged that down. I just need to go out on the bandsaw and cut a bunch of those pieces. Afterwards, I'll have a little gap, and I'll just take some of these pieces to kind of show you what it'll look like. I'll have a little gap where I need these little cubes to kind of fill in my pieces here on the edge. So those will get stacked here. Those will get stacked like that. And then I'll grind everything off flush so I have a nice flat surface. So we have this kind of a sloppy weave where I'll grind back to right there. So I'll have a nice straight line along the whole piece. Alright, let's go out to the bandsaw and we'll cut our final pieces out for our tiles. Oh, this is not hard enough. It's okay. Tell us what you're doing. So recently I got an order for a Meganata for a Capital Area Budokai Meganata school. So they're kind of my neighbors and I really like that school. So I'm making a whole arm. It starts out like this. This is a piece of Tamahagani. This is the D2 grade, the lowest grade. So here I have the Kawagani, which is the jacket that is high carbon and starts out as A1 and A2 grade Tamahagani. And I already finished making the Shingani, the insert. Cool. So now once this has one more fold, it will be flattened out and this insert will go into it, nice. creating a traditional Japanese blade. Sweet. And why do you work in charcoal instead of uh, just gas? That's a great question. Now. The reason why you work traditional materials like tamahagani, wrought iron, even sometimes crucible steel and charcoal is because charcoal is always a reducing atmosphere, meaning it sucks out oxygen from your material. You can get material hotter and there's less scale inside of your wells. Tamahagani doesn't really like gas, it really loves charcoal. I don't use coal because coal tends to be high sulfur and tamahagani is clean, so we'll absorb the sulfur and make a blade worse. So charcoal is the traditional optimal way of processing this material. Sweet. So as I mentioned before, um, I thought I was ready to put my, my billet together, but I actually have to cut up a few more pieces and then I'll be ready. So I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut my final... Um, my final billet into the tiles that I've reduced to three quarters and then three quarters again of the other tiles and then uh, then I'll be able to do the final layout. Alrighty. So here is our flower billet. My flower billet that I'm calling. I just need to cut that up into eight pieces and then we can start assembling. Got a little piece here that I've used as my spacer. Go ahead and cut this. When they think of making Damascus, they always think of the sexy part where we're forging it. You see all the sparks on the power hammer. But when doing mosaic, more often than not, this is how you spend most of your time. On the bandsaw, on the grinder, you know, just cutting your pieces over and over and over. Restacking, cutting, restacking, cutting, restacking, cutting.
got five pieces. Three more. We can start putting our stuff together. Now I haven't kneeled most of my pieces as good as I can. So I'm not cutting hard material here. It's pretty soft. Even so, it does take a wear on your saw blades. You'll see a lot of people use cutoff tools on an angle grinder or even a big chop saw to do this work. We just kind of abuse the saw blades to get in the ones that we need to. pieces cut, go inside, stack them up. All right, now we got all of our pieces finalized. Let's check out, see how they stack up. Righty. Now we can uh, put this together finally. Hopefully. 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 This one, this one goes like hell. Take the squares away. So, flour. This is also flour. It's here. Flour. It's here. Flour fits here. Flour fits here. And here. Now my other billet that's here, here, and here, I did something really cool. Instead of just making like explosion or something like that, I made little triangles, and then I stacked those triangles into a square and forge welded, you know, on the diagonal. So my my pattern kind of comes down and goes out and radiates out. Um, I don't know why I did it like that. I just thought it was a really cool pattern to try. Really, I wasn't focused too much on the end result but the process and then I reduced that square back down into these little cubes that fill our gaps on the corners. Now mosaic Damascus is a lot different than other Damascus. See your pattern is always on the face of the billet. So for instance Here's my main billet. Normally when you make a billet like this, you draw your blade out here. Your pattern creates, uh, is created by all the different layers and whatnot stacked naturally this way. But here, your pattern is actually on the face of your billet. So you have to do some creative tricky thinking in order to expose that pattern. Um, in this case, obviously, I'm laying everything out face up, forge welding and going from there. Pretty ambitious, but uh, I think I got it. Let's take a look this way, a little overhead. You can see I got a few gaps I have to fill. But overall, we're there, guys. 
each of these billets, each of my square billets still has its rough sides. So I have to go in, sand all my flats before I even think about tack welding this up. And the reason being is all this scale will just inhibit my weld. Oxidized metal, it's not gonna work. So back to the drawing board, more like back to the sanders. Here you go guys, this is my big unveil. I've been teasing it on Instagram for a while, but this will be the core of my main sword that I plan to showcase at Blade Show 2019. So this is a hell of a journey so far. This is several months uh, all working out um, at, out of our shop, but after hours. So this is all after hours work coming after three o'clock. We all check out, stop making BCAS product. And that's one of the main advantages we have of working here is that Carrie's put together an amazing workshop full of tools. And if you stay after three o'clock, you can make some pretty awesome stuff with all the tools we have here. And uh, that's what I'm doing. Ilya's kind of punked me on it uh, for a while now to make sure that I need to get back into forging. And uh, that's what I'm doing. So instead of just doing some simple projects, I kind of went overboard, got the mosaic bug pretty hard, and now I'm, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this to myself, but it's gonna be awesome. Well, at this point, the jacket is almost flattened out, so I cut it off the stick and turn it around. As you can see, where is it? There. It's very nice. Awesome. All right, so it's my turn to go back in, turn the sanders on, grind a bunch of the scale off my tiles, and then uh, we'll be ready to finally put this thing together. Oh. I was uh, working on wood handles for axes all day, so a lot of sawdust. All right, let's grind some scale. Now I know what you're thinking. Anybody with grinding experience knows that you can't really get anything nice and true and flat when you're using a contact wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the Bader B3 sander, flip this around, and I'm going to put this attachment on, which is a platen. So I won't be able to get perfectly flat on this either, but I'll get real close, close enough to make my forge welds work. I'm pretty sure I've done this a few times now. So we're gonna put that on the sander and get these things even flatter.
Thanks for watching this episode of In the Works. I hope you've enjoyed watching some of our projects come together. If you did enjoy this video, or found it helpful, or just plain were entertained, be sure to click the like button, and as always, subscribe to That Works. Don't forget to click that bell to make sure you get the notifications of any of our future content. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out some of the other content on our channel.